part two. Okay. So a cotangent of 30 degrees is adjacent over opposite. The adjacent would be the square root of 3 over 2. Opposite would be 1 half. So the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Again, the 2s are going to cancel here, which is just the square root of 3 over 1. So that's the square root of 3 over 1. And what's that? Well, it's just the square root of 3. Okay. So I'm going to try and go through this uh, next one a little bit faster. What you'll notice is that you end up doing a lot of the same simplification. So you start off with the same fraction. And so you don't need to work all the way through the simplification every time. Uh, and you'll, you'll get a feel for this as you practice this more, which you need to do. Okay. So sine of 60. All right, here's the 60 degree angle. We'll be using this one this time. So sine of 60 would be opposite over hypotenuse, opposite would be the square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1, or just simply, like back here, the square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 60. Here's 60. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 1 half over 1, which is just 1 half. Just like there. Hmm. Uh, tangent of 60. The tangent of 60 is going to be opposite over adjacent. So that's the koa, opposite over adjacent. Opposite side from the 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. And then the adjacent side to the 60 is the 1 half. And so we've done this before, haven't we? Yeah, it's the same thing as the cotangent of 30. It's the same two sides. So that's going to simplify, just like that one, to the square root of 3. Cosecant of 60. This is, um, cosecant is sine upside down, so it's hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse over opposite. So cosecant of 60 is hypotenuse over opposite. That's 1 over the square root of 3 over 2. Hey, we've done that before, too. That was the same thing as the secant of 30. 2 square root of 3 over 3. What about the secant of 60? Well, here is the 60 degree angle. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. That's cosine upside down. Hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's 1 over 1 half. Or just simply 2, as previously stated. Cotangent of 60. Um, okay. Adjacent over opposite. There's the 60, there's the adjacent, there's the opposite. So it's 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2. Or, just simply, as before, the square root of 3 over 2. Here, actually, I'll work all the way through this one since I kind of ran out of room there, just to be clear. So, kind of get a little more room down here. So, 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. I'm going to take the 1 half, I'm going to flip it upside down, and multiply. Or, sorry, I take the, I'm going to flip the bottom, which is the square root of 3 over 2, and I'm going to multiply. Now when I do that, those twos are going to cancel out, and that leaves me with simply 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, what's 1 over the square root of 3? Well, I need to get, get rid of the denominator, get rid of the um, square root that's on the bottom. So to do that, I multiply the top and the bottom both by the square root of 3. 1 times the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just a regular 3. That's like the square root of 3 squared. Okay. What about sine of 45? So now we're going to be using this 45 degree triangle. And it doesn't matter which 45 degree angle you use, you'll get the same measurement. So I'm going to use this one. Sine of 45, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's the square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1, or just simply the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 45, uh, so there's 45, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, square root of 2 over 2 over 1. Okay, it's the same thing, isn't it? Tangent of 45. 
So here's 45. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's the square root of 2 over 2, opposite side, divided by the square root of 2 over 2, adjacent side. And what happens when you divide anything by itself, even if it's a complicated fraction? Hey, where'd my lights go? Uh, you get a 1. Hold on while I turn the lights back. Okay, uh, what about the cosecant of 45? Here's 45. Cosecant is sine upside down, hypotenuse over opposite. Uh, so what I could also do is just take this sine, which right here, and I can just write that fraction upside down. And so, with it, regardless of how I look at it, so hypotenuse over opposite would be 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. So I flip the bottom and multiply, and I get 2 over the square root of 2, because I'm multiplying the bottom, which is just this fraction flipped upside down. So there's a little shortcut for you. Um, now, I still need to rationalize it, so multiply the top and the bottom by whatever that square root is, the square root of 2. So on the top, you get 2 square root of 2. And on the bottom, you get 2. And hey, look. That'll reduce a little bit more. You've got a 2 as a factor on the top and the bottom. So I can cancel those out. And it's simply the square root of 2. What about secant of 45? Well, that's the cosine of 45 upside down, which is actually the same thing here. But just to be clear, it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. 1 over the square root of 2 over 2 which, as previously shown, simplifies to simply the square root of 2. What about the cotangent of 45? Well, that's the tangent of 45 upside down. So I should just get 1. Um, but let's look at the side. So adjacent over opposite. Square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2, which is just 1. OK, so as you get better at this, um, which you will, you're going to get way more practice than you ever wanted. But it still might not might not be enough. So if you need more practice, just you can make up some problems. Um, you can do whatever. You can ask me for more problems. But these are all of the basically these are all the possible uh, angles that I would ask you for from these triangles right now. And later we'll make this work for even bigger angles, like like even 90 degrees or 120 degrees, something like that. Okay. So if you have any questions, you know where to find me.